and uh, talk about uh, something which is close to many people's hearts, which is trying to buy a flat or indeed yes. a house, and particularly your first flat or whatever it is. But um, we have a, a very archaic system in this country, which is called the leasehold system. And there is an article that, that ran this week uh, about the bill that's going through Parliament at the moment to reform England's, and, and I use this word, and I think it's the right word, feudal system. It dates back to sort of medieval times. It's going through Parliament, but it, but it is the craziest situation that people are in and this poor chap called Chris Hayes bought a flat in central Manchester it was brand new when he moved in so he was very exciting and then of course uh, it all started to go wrong so the water started leaking through the badly built roof he is then facing a bill wait for this of hundred and seventy thousand pounds to repair it now obviously he can't afford to do that he's 34 years old he said to do that would leave him homeless bankrupt and jobless because if he went bankrupt he then couldn't work in financial services which yep. is what he does now the extraordinary thing about this is Chris is liable not the developer under the terms of his lease and, and this seems to me to be a bonkers system that is well overdue to be reformed and someone else who shares that view is Barry Gardner who is Labour Member of Parliament for Brent North good morning to you morning um, yes, David. it's a very sad situation for people who find themselves uh, in leasehold flats. Absolutely right. So you've been campaigning on this for, for a long time. Can you, I, I sort of was outlining one case study there. Can you explain what the complexities of this are and what, what this bill is trying to address? Yeah. Um, look, when you buy uh, a new home in, in a flat, you think you're buying a home just as if it's uh, a house uh, on, a, on a street. You're not. What you're buying is you're buying the right to live there for a period of time, say 99 years, and that's the extent of your lease. And you think you might have control so that if you want to um, decide to paint the windows a different color, or if you want to um, change the windows because they're not working properly or, or any work that you want to do to it, um, you think that it's your right to do it. No, it's not. Um, it's somebody else's. It's the freeholder. It's the person who you bought the lease from who gets to say what work needs doing, when it needs doing, and how much you will pay for it. And, and that's the problem. Somebody else has control over your home, and it's not you, but you end up paying for it. And so lots of people, literally five million people, are in leasehold flats and most of them are finding that it's actually a huge problem if there are problems with the building they can't sell they can't move on uh, fire stopping problems after grenfell all the fire safety defects that were found in blocks of flats after the grenfell fire tragedy uh, means that uh, people actually uh, can't sell, they can't move because no mortgage lender will give a new buyer a mortgage on the property. And, and that's the problem. People are trapped in their own homes. And this seems fundamentally unjust, and particularly one one of the things I wanted to ask you was uh, if you buy a new flat and there are there are defects to that, I thought it would be covered by the NHBC guarantee in the first instance. Is that not always the case? Yeah. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, what very often happens is that uh, each body blames the other. So the NHBC will say, well, it's the developer. The developer will say, well, it's the uh, the building control officer. The building control officer will blame the project manager. And you go around in a neat circle with everybody blaming everybody else and nobody ending up doing the work to sort out your property that you're living in but have no control over. Um, it, earlier uh, this week in my own constituency, uh, there was a fire. Um, a major fire 125 firefighters were there three of those tall turntables uh, and about 20 fire engines and there was cladding on the outside of the property cladding just like at Grenfell that combustible cladding that caused so much problem now that fire and that cladding was still there because for three years the owner of the property 
that is the housing association has been negotiating with the developer as to who's going to pay the bill mm. for taking the cladding off so now fortunately in this case none of the residents were injured or killed in the fire everybody was evacuated safely uh, and and that was a wonderful testimony to the fire brigade um but the problem was this, that fire should never have happened. That cladding should never have, have still been on that building. And it's still there because people were arguing about who was responsible for paying the costs. Mm. And, and in the interim, of course, it's people who are caught in the middle of this, whilst people are arguing about who is going to pay for it. I mentioned the NHBC earlier. That's the National House Building Council, um, and, and you have certain rights under that. It's interesting, one of the, um, one of the people who is affected by this says... Why is it that when it benefits the freeholder, you're a leaseholder, and when it doesn't, you're suddenly a homeowner? Yeah, well, it, it, exactly. Um, look, so when, when there are fire problems, fire defects in, in the building, very often what the, uh, the head leaseholder or the freeholder will do is they'll put in something called a waking watch. That is somebody who goes around the building to make sure that there aren't any fires and to alert you if there are. But that waking watch, you often end up paying for um, so all these costs are being loaded onto you. The, the alarm system, the new fire doors, these are costs which, which very often are, are being you as the leaseholder are being made to pay for. Um, and it's completely iniquitous. Uh, and so, so for me, I just I struggle with this. So you're spending all this money, and as you rightly say, you're not actually buying that particular flat. You're buying essentially a tenancy for 99 years or yep. whatever it is on that particular piece of land. Now, the government under Mr Gove says, right, OK, we're getting a bill through Parliament. It will address this. But that's not the case, is it? It actually will only apply to houses. It doesn't actually apply to fat, flats. Yes, it, look, it applies to leasehold houses. That's a, a separate problem with leasehold houses because what's been happening there is that the the developers have now, it's a scam, quite honestly, they, they create new leasehold houses. And the result of that is that they charge people a ground rent. Now, that ground rent may start off being nominal. It might be £250 a year. There's no service provided for that. It's just a, a, an ongoing payment. And in, the, in the, uh, the small print of your lease, what you find is that ground rent doubles every so often, maybe every five years. Um, so it's, suddenly it's £500, then it's £1,000, then it's £2,000, then it's £4,000, £8,000, £16,000. It just goes on exponentially. Um, so we have people now um, in these houses which to all intents and purposes you look at and you think, well, it's just a normal house. No, it's not, mm. because you're actually paying to live there. Sometimes lots of people at the moment were paying £8,000 a year just to live in their house, receiving no service at all. So this bill does address some problems, but it doesn't address the major problems of people trapped in leasehold flats. So, so there clearly is a political imperative from people like yourselves to change the leasehold system for flats. Is that likely at all? Because at the moment we've got people trapped. As you said, people can't sell those flats. They're pretty much worthless. They've put their life savings into this and, and it's fundamentally unfair. Well, look, this bill was supposed to do that. And Michael Gove originally said, I'm going to end fe the feudal leasehold system. Well, he hasn't. Uh, and I'm afraid it will have to fall, I hope, to a future Labour government to do just that. And and the good news is that that is a commitment that Labour's made, uh, that we will end this leasehold flat system and we'll move to a system called commonhold. Every other country in the world has changed from leasehold. So we introduced it, of course, around the British Empire. So mm. Australia had it, America had it, Canada had it, everywhere that we, we where we left our footprints had leasehold. Every single country has changed except us. They've gone to common hold, they've gone to strata title. Um, and so what we propose is to do what the rest of the world has done very successfully for a long period of time. Uh, and Barry, can I just ask you, is that a cast iron guarantee that you will move from these leaseholds to a common, uh, a common hold? 
Absolutely, and I was delighted that uh, my colleague Matthew Pennycook, uh, who was the Shadow Minister uh, on the Bill Committee with me, gave that commitment in Parliament that we will move to a common hold system for the five million people trapped in leasehold flats.